Well, my first roles as a professional actor were all on radio, because um, this is in the very early days of um, the 60s and early 70s when TV wasn't really, you know, there was a bit of stuff going on. My brother was in close to home. But, um, but I did lots of stuff at Radio New Zealand because my mother was a radio actress. So I had my own little apple box at Radio New Zealand because I was the shortest actor there. And I played little boys because there were no roles for little girls. But I, I did that for quite a few years. I'd go and, and, um, and do voiceovers and radio plays at Radio New Zealand. And, and from there I um, got a role in Bad Blood, directed by Mike Newell. It was a little role, but it was a really great experience. And, um, um, and from there, I, I, my first big break on screen was in, um, in Gloss. And I got that role when I was living in Dunedin, working in the theatre, and everyone said to me, oh, what are you doing, leaving this, you know, your vocation in the theatre and going up to play a role in some crappy soapy thing in Auckland, going into work in Gloss allowed me to A, have a lot of fun and, um, and be part of an amazing programme that, that made its mark, made a, a lovely groove in the history of New Zealand television and screen work. But also it meant that I was able to get a lot of traction and profile from that show that it has enabled me ever since to do the things that I want to do. So Gloss has been very good to me. The received wisdom is Gemma, Gemma was the bitch from hell. And of course she developed into being the bitch from hell, but you have to have a journey. And, um, and the little episode of Gloss, the first episode, which is on NZ On Screen, which I watched recently, going, oh my goodness, it's so long ago. It seems like that, but it's so long ago. And, and Gemma started out as a really nice girl from Hamilton who had genuinely wanted to be a journalist and who wears some nice flat shoes and some really ugly 80s jeans. And I think the reason Gemma was such a great character in Gloss is because she started here and she ended up, whoa, just somewhere way away from where she kicked off. So it was an amazing fun to play that, um, that journey and that slow change as she fell in love and then realised that, you know, she could use um, elements of herself and use her body to get her where she wanted to be and she became ambitious and she became manipulative and, and jettisoned all the good things that, 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 um, that she had going. I was in a restaurant, the VBG in Parnell, eating dinner by myself and, um, and a man went, went past me to go and pay for his meal and leave and as he, he saw me and he came back and he said to me, if you were my wife, I'd have shot you by now. Just completely out of the blue. I was like, whoa, this is crossing the boundaries of fiction and, um, and is becoming, this is really starting to affect my life. And pe people would spit at me on the beach and people felt incredibly strongly about how horrible my character was. After that intense um, three years of making and screening Gloss, and, um, and I went away and studied um, drama therapy at the Central School of Speech and Drama in London for a year. And that was really amazing. I worked in psychiatric institutions and prisons and um, uh, centres for disabled adults and a school for deaf children. Um, and, and that was great. I became very interested in working in prisons. It would be really amazing for them to be able to tell their own stories. And then I started to think about how interesting it would be for um, men especially who committed violent crimes, to hear what their own families think about that. Because often people who commit violent crimes or people who commit crime at all are quite resistant to taking on what the victim thinks. They're like, no. Nah. And so all of these things were going on for me in the, the drama therapeutic field. And um, I came back to New Zealand, met William Brandt, where we flew all, all over the country and interviewed people in prisons about violent crime, particularly about murder. William and I, uh, co-devised and he wrote verbatim, uh, which then Shirley Horrocks made into Act of Murder, shot by Leon Narvi, which I'm so grateful that they gave us the money to make that documentary and that Shirley uh, had the, um, the nous and the passion and determination to make that documentary. Because it's only once you put something on screen that, that it doesn't get lost. It was really a, an extraordinary experience to perform that show in front of prison audiences also to perform it in schools and also to perform it in theatres. So it had this kind of three-way um, refraction device going on where every different audience was fascinated by how the other audiences received it. My husband, Stuart McKenzie, was the writer of Portraits and he and I researched um, and, and put it together. together. So um, Portraits was the story of 
uh, two people whose daughter had been abducted, raped and murdered. The third character was her killer and the fourth character was his girlfriend. And these were all people that we had interviewed. Portraits was a really intense and, um, and chilling first-hand verbatim account from these four characters, all played by me. And then it sort of m morphed and Stuart carried it on and turned that theatre show, Portraits, into his feature for good. He just did a remarkable job. He made an extraordinary account full of beautiful performances of um, this very chilling series of events. And it, um, it, went over, it was in competition at the, the Paris Film Festival, at another French film festival at one Best Actress for Michelle Langston. It was in competition at Montreal. Like all the things I'm talking about in this interview, there are sort of markers or coat hooks in your life where you go, yeah, that is something I'm really proud to have been involved in. I think to some degree the film is about um, somebody's fascination with, um, with an event, how it came to be and the fallout from that event, in this case uh, an abduction, rape and murder. And um, Michelle Langston's character has been haunted by this her whole life and, um, and so she finally decides to take, take action. For me, that, that reflects um, what I brought with me when I came back from the UK and something that Stuart and I share, which is a, an interest in human psychology. All actors are interested in human psychology, but an interest in um, the nature of evil or the nature of what it is to, to, to cross the boundary between normal human experience and to cross the boundary into um, stuff that is like, whoa. Well, Claire was an unusual show for its time for New Zealand television because it was based on the cervical cancer inquiry and everybody in it, Grant Telly, Robin Malcolm, me, we were playing real people. Um, I played Phyllida Bunkle and I loved doing the research for that. I loved going to meet her at Parliament and looking at the way she walked and the way she wore her clothes and the way she, she talked. So I got to change my natural energy um, and I got to play a very different kind of role, not the clothes horsey um, sophisticate that I had often played. That was a show with a lot of heart. I was a terrible student and would often just kind of be um, recovering from a hangover, wearing a fencing mask, resting in the corner of the room while improvisation classes went on. Um, I would have kicked me out, but they didn't, so I was lucky to graduate. And, um, and then having had those Appalling, appallingly badly behaved experiences as a student. I went back to the school many years later as a teacher and then I was uh, promoted or offered the um, opportunity of being the head of the acting department, which I did for seven years. And, um, and I did a really good job. I'm really pleased with the, with the work that I did at that school. It's very easy for institutions to kind of float off away from the actual industry practice and to graduate students who are not really connected with what it takes to be an actor and how to, to, to merge with the industry and create careers. And I was very committed to creating some careers. Making a career in the, the performing arts world in New Zealand is hard yakka, and you have to mix it up. So you have to do radio, you have to do TV, you have to do film, you have to do stage. And, and there are some people who don't do those things, but for me, I'm a, a great fan of variety and challenge. You don't have to limit yourself. So I've had a lot of fun with the different things that I've done in my career, from acting to directing on stage to directing on screen. I directed a short film. Voiceover is just something that's very close to my heart. It's only an 11-minute film, but it's something that, that I'm very proud of. Producing a film company, Matt Film Productions. I mean, it's just, you know, my career's been all over the place like a mad woman's piss. I've done everything. I've performed in prisons. I've played glamorous clothes horses on television. Um, I teach, I speak um, to, uh, to groups of people as a celebrity speaker. Um, I, now I'm very committed to my coaching work where I coach young actors, or not even young actors. I, I just coached a 65-year-old Māori lady who'd never acted before and who is brilliant in Yvonne Mackay's Kaitanga the Twitch. The fun in it and the challenge in it is finding a way to um, chart the difficult waters of getting the performance on screen. So the, the struggle that the audience never sees, where the crew's going, oh my God, and then you can finally find a way to help the director to get, get the business.